<laughs> and what are you working on now? What's, what's next for you I'm working that with, you can talk about? I'm working with Paul O'Neill in the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, which right. is a, uh, you that. a heavy metal or a progressive rock or symphonic rock, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, they do a Christmas tour. Of yeah, it. sure, sure, yeah. And I've been doing all their art for the last four years for, for them. Oh. And uh, that's an interesting story, too. You sure. Know? Uh, I, I'm wrapping Christmas presents at home. You know, I make a big thing about that, and Gene, you know, with Gene, and, and going through all, all the Christmas music, Frank Sinatra, you know, and I kind of reached down behind my rack, CD rack, and I says, what the hell is this? The Trans-Siberian Orchestra, it's still in cellophane. Yeah. Somebody gave it to me, right. I, don't, I don't, a couple of years back, yeah. and this was like four years ago. So I put it on, and I'm rapping, and I says, well, this is not regular Christmas music, so it, it, it's, it's, it's incredible, it's, you know, uh, yeah. and so I take it to my studio, and uh, I was sharing a studio with, then my brother was alive, and, and a friend, another painter, and he says, oh, I've heard of them, my buddy sees them, so he calls his buddy, his buddy says, oh, you got to hear Beethoven's Last Night, a rock opera on Beethoven, on disc, not performed yet, so I go get that, that, in and that just knocks me out, so I'm again doing my stay up till three o'clock in the morning, do this kind of like thing, let it obsess me. Yeah. So I kind of I come out of my stupor with a pile of art, like six inches thick, on Beethoven's last night, and I show it to Jean, and, and I say, well, "We got to do something. Should I do something with this? I, I, I don't know." And she says, well, "Well, call him." I said, "No, no, you call him. You're the one that calls. No, no, no. This is a fanboy thing. You call him." <laughs> so she gets the number. I call. It's a recording studio in New York. And the guy answers, Paul's not there. And he says, well, I'll give the message. Next day at my studio, the phone rings, and he, a voice comes on. Is Greg Hillebrand there? I says, this is him. He says, I couldn't believe you called me. It's, it's Paul. Right. He's like totally like shooting through the ceiling. He's your fanboy. Since the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Since the Lord of the Rings days. So we're these two fanboys bouncing off each other like maniacs. <laughs> and, it was, and it started that way. And we have this intense so, uh, you know, a relationship. And so I've done all their art for their tour stuff, all their t-shirt stuff, all their posters and, and stuff. And also Paul's, I'm working on a graphic novel with him uh, yeah. this year, and it non-musical related. I'm also working, Paul's got a, a couple of shows written for rock opera for Broadway, possibly for Las Vegas. I'll be working with him on those, mm -hmm. doing design and whatnot. Right. So that's, that's a huge direction for me right there. That kind of looks like my year right now particularly that graphic novel. I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, that's great, and so are we. Thank you very much. Thanks, Greg. That's real, a real pleasure. Here at the Montclair Art Museum with Greg Hildebrand. Greg, we're respectable. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? <laughs> <laughs> it's overwhelming. We're respectable. <laughs> yes, it's overwhelming. I remember it was all crap. It was garbage. You threw this stuff away. Nobody would ever think of it. Is, is museum worthy material. It was like I, the thought was never there. To bring that idea up, you would be excommunicated from the art establishment. 